Here we've got a nice integral that appeared on the math subject test for the GRE, although I'm sure it's in a lot of different places as well, because integrals like this are pretty commonplace. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We have the integral from zero to pi of x times sine of x over one plus cosine squared of x. And I'm gonna go through a couple of hints that are built into the structure of this problem before we look at the solution. So our first hint is maybe using the technique of wishful thinking. And by wishful thinking is that you look at the problem and simplify it in some sort of way so that it's easier to solve. And let's notice if we get rid of this multiplier of x, it's actually pretty easy to take this integral. We would have the integral of sine x over one plus cosine squared x via a pretty simple u substitution, u equals cosine x. We can transform that into negative the integral of du over one plus u squared, which clearly integrates out to minus arctan of u or minus arctan of cosine of x. Now we can put that into a closed form if we need to, but in practice that's not super necessary because we have a definite integral. Okay, so now that we've got kind of our wishful thinking taken care of, our goal should be how to transform this integral into an integral like this which is easier to deal with. And how could we do that? Well, maybe by exploiting some symmetry in the bounds of integration. So let's notice that sine of pi minus theta is the same thing as sine of theta. That's a standard trigonometric identity. And then furthermore, cosine of pi minus theta is minus cosine of theta. That might seem problematic, but notice up here, cosine is being squared. So really, if we square both sides of this, we have equality without a minus sign. Okay, cool. Now that we've got this taken care of, we're ready to look at a solution. And I'm gonna like present this solution in a pretty elegant way. This is maybe like a second draft type solution. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by rewriting this as one half and then this integral plus itself. So we've got the integral from zero to pi of x times sine of x over one plus cosine squared of x dx. Like I said, plus the same thing, the integral from zero to pi of x sine of x over one plus cos squared of x dx. So that's definitely allowed because one plus one is two times a half is clearly one. So we're good to go there. Now we wanna use a substitution that will take advantage of this second hint. And we'll do that either in the first integral or the second integral, it doesn't really matter. So let's do it in this second integral. So here we'll let x equal pi minus theta. But let's notice that that means dx is equal to minus d theta. So that takes care of the variables. Now, what about the bounds of integration? So if x is equal to zero, that tells us that theta is equal to pi. And if x is equal to pi, that tells us that theta is equal to zero. Okay, so let's see what we've got now. We have this x can be replaced with pi minus theta. This x right here can be replaced with pi minus theta, but then using this identity, we might as well just replace it with theta. Okay, and then this cosine squared of x can be replaced with cosine squared of theta for the same kind of reason down here. Next, we've got dx is minus d theta, but then our bounds change from zero to pi to pi to zero by this observation. Well, we can take that minus sign and just switch the bounds back. So that means I can change this to d theta. Again, I've canceled out a minus sign there. Okay, so now I wanna make a trivial substitution and the trivial substitution I'll do here is to substitute back theta equals x. Now, if you're uncomfortable with that, you could use another dummy variable, but I'm just gonna stick with x. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us one half 
And then we've got this integral right here, which is unchanged, the integral from zero to pi of x times sine of x over one plus cosine squared of x. Then, since our bounds are the same, and I've changed my variables back, I might as well just put these into one integral. So that's gonna be plus, so we'll have pi minus x, again, because we're substituting back in for theta equals x, times sine of x over one plus cos squared of x. And then all of this is inside our integral. So we have something like that. Okay, now let's see what sort of simplification can be done. Notice here we have an x sine x. Here we have a negative x sine x. So those are going to in fact cancel. So let's see what that gives us. So this entire thing right here will cancel with this x right here. So that leaves us a pi times sine of x over one plus cosine squared of x. In other words, kind of our dream right here. Let's go ahead and take that pi outside. That'll leave us with pi over two. Then we have the integral from zero to pi of sine of x over one plus cos squared of x dx. Like I pointed out here, via this simple u substitution, I can turn that into minus arctan of cosine of x. So here we have, this is minus pi over two arctan of cosine of x, and then we need to evaluate that from zero up to pi. I'm gonna do a bit of a simplification here. This isn't super necessary, but I think it maybe just reduces the possibility of making a sign error. I'll take this minus sign and I'll change it to a plus by changing the order of the bounds of evaluation. Okay, now that's gonna give me pi over two times the quantity arctan of cosine of zero. So that's gonna be inverse tangent of one, which is pi over four, minus arctan of cosine of pi. That's gonna be the inverse tangent of minus one, which is a negative pi over four. Okay, so that's what we get from evaluating the bounds. But now very clearly, these two combine together to give us pi over two, so in the end, we have pi over two times pi over two, which is pi squared over four. And that's a good place to stop.